Coach, when you're preparing this early on in the season for a conference game, an Oregon team that's maybe, I mean, they got just shelled by Georgia and then they go and they beat the doors off of BYU, does it make it difficult to prepare for a team when you've only seen a small sample size and it's some wild games? Well, Oregon's talented. Yeah. Okay, they got a bunch of four and five star athletes running around. Like I think everyone realizes the challenge that Oregon presents. Um, there's there's limited information with the new coaching staff, and and that's a lot of this league. You know, so we've done a good job. We've we've looked at last year's Georgia tape for defense. We look at last year's Florida State tape for offense. But it isn't about all that, right? And I've I've talked to our guys about it a million times. It's about us. Okay, what are, what's our focus level? I mean, they'll they'll give us a ton of things, offense, defense, special teams that we haven't seen. So you got to really rely back to your rules and your principles and your fundamentals, and you got to look that man in the mirror, and you got to be ready to play your best, give your best effort. So uh, there'll be more things than just schemes, you know, on Saturday. It's going to be about who we are, you know, and trying to do it better. Like how we do it needs to be better than everybody else in the country. Okay, and that's what we can control. So that's been our focus this week. Uh, uh, you know, they're big, they're long, they're physical, and and they're great in space. So we know who they are and we know the challenge and we got to be up to it. And then is there any kind of difference in terms of the preparation? Obviously now the conference games, this is where they really count um, in towards going towards the Pac-12. Uh, is there anything different that you're preparing? They've all counted. Yeah. They've all counted to me. You know, they've all counted to these guys, right? So, you know, they understand the importance, to your point, uh, they understand the importance of a Pac-12 game, okay? But the preparation and what we want to do to win the game really stays the same. Um, and you don't freak out if you don't win one, right? So you got to stay the course. It's a long season. We're just ready for this moment come Saturday at 1 o'clock. How are uh, Renard and Shaw and Jaylee and Trey looking? They look good. I think, you know, same thing. Uh, I think Trey's going to be ready to good to go for sure. Uh, I think Shaw, you know, is on his progression and Jay Lee's on his progression, you know, so we're getting those guys back ready to go and we're hopeful, you know, come Saturday we can see him back out there. You know, it's not a definite, but we're hopeful. Um, Oregon's run game, are, are they mostly stressing is that kind of a space thing as well are they looking for the edges a lot of the time yeah you know it's a little bit different they got a couple bigger backs this year you know than the speed guys but they do have an emphasis of wanting to run the ball you know they are the modern air raid uh, but they're, they tilt a little bit more towards 50 50 and then getting the ball out fast but uh, you know the transfer kid is, is physical he's aggressive I mean he's a really good player uh, but they find unique ways just like we do of getting the ball in space and getting it to their athletes and I think that's where they excel so you know if we we can tackle in space and the first guy can get them down it'll be a big advantage you know but those are hard challenges that we've been repping the heck out of this week just to make sure that uh, we're bringing our feet we got good posture and pad level and uh, you know effort take care of a lot of that stuff when they're dancing around you talked about uh, you know having to channel emotion for those first three games how, how uh, happy have you been with just the maturity of the team being able to in each of those games. Really happy, oxygen. really happy. I mean, there, there's not a thing where I came, came in, and I think last week was a good, um, you know, emphasis of that. The guys were ready to play, and they were focused, and they were determined, and I'm not a big fan of reading during pregame. Like, I used to do that as a young coach, and oh, they don't have energy. Like, we've been focused, and we've been prepared, and we've been ready to play. So that's a that's a really kudos to the leadership on the team. You know, uh, Connor, and Renard, and Lincoln, and RJ, BJ, and Armani, that's leadership, and uh, it's not, it, I can say it all I want, but they're the ones going out there and doing it. Been really happy with uh, you know how we've attacked the first three weeks. And I won't ask you the the nickname question again, but are there uh, maybe three to five descriptors or words you could use to characterize the attitude and, and style? You're, you're on this puppy. You're on this puppy. I, I really like to do it after the season, um, after a big body of work. But like I said, I you feel this team like you feel them like and I said like I said it's effort it's physicality uh, it, more importantly it, it's caring who you know they don't care who gets the credit okay and I think that's something that's hard to really see because then you get a bunch of guys pressing they're doing their job and they're fast physical and aggressive but play hard play fast play together is what we've stressed the moment we've gotten here you look back over the last decade or so and these have historically been programs led by offensive minds you look at Chip Kelly Mike Leach um, obviously, you know, you beyond just a defensive guy, but is it kind of ironic that both head coaches come from defensive backgrounds as defensive coordinators when it's been such an offensive matchup over the last decade? 
Yeah, I mean, I just would think, you know, our two schools in particular, right? That's what you think of when you when you see Oregon, you see Washington State, a lot of offense. But, uh, you know, me and Dan and I, I mean, it's rare, right? Defensive head coaches, you don't get them as much uh, in today's world. So, but I think it's both guys understanding what you need to do offensively to still win games, right? So um, it is a little bit unique, and it's a maybe a culture and a mentality shift. But at the end of the day, you know, I know I want to score a lot of points. I'm sure he wants to score a lot of points. So uh, it's still an offensive world a little bit in college football. You mentioned Marquis Irving's been a pretty effective back. I think he's averaging almost seven yards a carry. How much of what do you take what you did against Braylon Allen and apply that to this week, or are they just completely different runners? Yeah, just different style of offense, too, because you don't give Braylon Allen as much space. You get him so much physical and downhill. But uh, I, I see what your question is. It's a very similar style. He's more of a bruiser, um, but he's done a good job of breaking the first initial tackle. And then that's what we're talking about, and those two guys share that same thing. we got to make sure we're getting 11 hats to the ball, but uh, they'll try to get him a ball in a lot of different ways, and they rotate in a lot of guys, and then 22 come comes in and he's flashy and he's speed and then they roll in another five-star guy and boop, 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 here it comes. You know, so we got to be ready for whoever's back there and they all have their little unique role. Is there something on tape that you've maybe noticed offensively or defensively that, that can be exploited? I know third downs especially they've struggled on defense. Yeah, and I think that's a product of some of the down and distances, right, when you look at just some of the tapes on it. But, uh, you know, I won't give away our secrets too much. Uh, what's the difficulty with going against a team who roster-wise might be so familiar, but again, lots of changes in the coaching staff and especially at quarterback with Oregon? I mean, they've had a decent amount of changes too. Um, you know, I think the big one for them is the quarterback. You know, I think the Knicks kid gives them a really athletic kid that's played a lot of football but can stand in there and deliver the ball, right? So um, different from the kid from last year. So, uh, you know, that's really a question for them. That's their culture. That's what they're doing. Um, but I, I, you still see speed and athleticism and size. So uh, they're always going to have that. And you got to be ready to, to for a physical 60-minute football game. And then what's your message to the fans for this first conference home game? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, there's there's 500 tickets left, okay? And we're going to max this place out, and this is going to be just like game day, okay? And our fans need to come here and be loud and set the tempo right from the kickoff. And our student section on third down needs to be loud, and, and they got to make sure they're going on the clap and they're, they're doing their thing because it's going to be a loud environment. This can be the toughest place to play in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, we got to make it that way each and every day. And uh, we get an amazing opportunity, and I'm so proud of Cougs everywhere because they're going to show up. They're going to show out. Okay, and that crimson and gray is going to be a fun environment, but this is the environment that we can have each and every week because that's the impact that our people can make. I'm, I'm appreciative for them, and, and they're going to show up and make a difference. And it's about being loud for 60 minutes, and I know our, our people and our students are going to be ready to do it.